So now that we've covered the basics, we're just about ready to get started playing some music together. The lessons that are part of this series all focus on one or two different techniques or musical concepts at a time. So for instance, the first lesson focuses just on playing double vertical strokes with your hand set at the interval of a perfect fifth. Second lesson, you're using all double vertical strokes, but you're doing a couple of interval changes, and so on from there. I didn't want you to have to think of a million things at once, so each lesson really focuses on just one or two concepts. The etudes in each lesson are pretty short, because I wanted you to be able to learn a piece of music in a few weeks, rather than spending months learning a piece of music that only teaches you a few concepts that you need to learn. Also, I really tried to make the music as fun and interesting as I could, so be sure to let me know how you think I did in the comments for each lesson. There are also exercises in each lesson, and the music in the exercises is drawn directly from the etudes. I wanted you to be able to practice the technical concepts that we're talking about while learning the notes that you're going to need to know anyway for the etude that's a part of the same lesson. The exercises are short and easy to memorize, so you can focus just on the technical concept or musical concept that we're talking about at any given time. I call most of these exercises warm-up exercises, because not only are they an opportunity for you to learn some of the notes and rhythms you'll need in the etude, or to focus on the musical concepts or technical concepts that we're talking about, these exercises are also an opportunity for you to warm your hands up before diving into a long practice session. If you've ever played sports or taken dance lessons, I'm sure you're familiar with the concept of a warm-up. You have to get your muscles loosened up before you exercise, and the exact same is true when you're playing music. When we practice, we're building strength and muscles in our fingers, and hands, wrists, and arms, and even our core muscles. So a proper warm-up will help you stay healthy and prevent any unnecessary pain or discomfort that will get in the way of you becoming a great musician. Another way that we're going to avoid unwanted pain or discomfort or just frustration is talking a lot about slow practice. The difference between great musicians and everyone else is that great musicians have the patience to start by practicing slowly before increasing the tempo. I've provided a range of tempo markings for each of these lessons and we'll be using a metronome throughout this video lesson series to make sure that we're using the proper tempo at any given time. You'll also notice that the exercises in your book are written with a suggested range of dynamics from forte to mezzo forte to piano. It's very important to become comfortable playing at a really wide range of dynamic levels. As percussionists, we primarily control our dynamics through our stick heights. If you start with the sticks prepared at the proper stick height and play with a relaxed stroke, you'll always have a control over how loud or quiet you're playing. If you want to play louder, increase your stick height. If you want to play quieter, decrease your stick height. We're never going to talk about hitting the instrument harder or hitting the instrument softer. For us, stick heights will always equal dynamics. If you prepare your stroke with a proper stick height and play it with a nice, relaxed motion, you'll always get the dynamic that you want. And you'll avoid unnecessary tension in your hand, and you'll always be getting a great sound on the instrument as well. Speaking of staying relaxed, that's something we're going to be talking about a ton throughout this series. I'm going to be talking about it a lot because it's so important. Throughout this video series, I'll be performing all of the exercises that are in your book. And there will also be videos of my performances of the complete etudes, which you can reference, to see the musical and technical concepts that we're talking about applied in performance. We cover a lot of topics in each lesson. So in the book, I also include a suggested daily practice routine for each lesson. And the last thing I'd like to mention is something we're going to be talking about a ton throughout this series of lessons, phrasing. Phrasing is what makes a bunch of notes and rhythms come together to sound like a piece of music. We'll mostly be talking about how subtle changes and how loud or quiet you play each note can create a sense of direction in a piece of music, like the music is moving you, or taking you on a journey, or telling you a story. And above all else, that's what this series of lessons is all about, making music. Because whether you can hold two mallets, or four mallets, or six mallets, whether you've got the fastest roll, or whether you can hit all the right notes or the right rhythms, none of that matters unless you're playing music that's exciting, or happy, or sad, or beautiful. Music that makes people want to listen. Thanks for watching.